Nashville, Tennessee. There's really no other place like it on the planet. For decades, it's been known as Music City USA and the country music capital of the world, but in recent years, it's become a hot spot for more than just its music, drawing in millions of visitors each year with its professional sports, delicious food scene, and how could we forget? Bachelorette parties. Needless to say, if you come to Nashville and don't have a good time, you probably didn't do it right because this place is a good time just waiting to happen. We've lived in Nashville for nearly a decade now, and we're excited to share with you the top 10 things to do in Music City. And be sure to stick around till the end of the video for a bonus. We're starting things off with what put the city on the map, and that's its music and how it shaped the city and impacted the world through the years. So let's dive into Nashville's music history. We're here at the Country Music Hall of Fame, which is one of the most popular ways to learn about Nashville's music history. It first opened its doors in 1967 at its original location, and after relocating to the current location in 2001. Welcome to Nashville, guys. Hold on. It's a Monday having, at noon. We're having to film this between <laughs> pedal taverns and party buses. And after relocating to its current location in 2001 and expanding in 2014, it is now a 350,000 square foot museum dedicated to all things country music. The Country Music Hall of Fame is home to the world's largest collection of country music artifacts, so it's no surprise that it's earned the nickname the Smithsonian of Country Music. And if you want to book your very own tour of the Country Music Hall of Fame or any of the experiences that you see us do in this video, we'll link them and a whole lot more down in the description, but right now that's enough talking about it. Let's go check it out. so much fun. Now we've been to the Country Music Hall of Fame multiple times and one of my favorite things is they always are changing exhibits so you always get to see something new. So if you've been to the Country Music Hall of Fame before, definitely come back and check it out again. <laughs> Some of my favorite things about the exhibits of course are the instruments. As a musician it's just so impressive seeing the instruments up close, reading the stories and the history behind them. Of course the cars are incredible. The oh fact that Elvis had a TV in his car like a big old way TV. back then. Awesome. <laughs> I love the outfits. The rhinestones Stones, getting to see what Dolly Parton wore. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and how can we forget the record walls? Those are awesome. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> also, if you come to the Country Music Hall of Fame, head just down the hall. Part of the Country Music Hall of Fame Foundation is the Hatch Show Print Shops. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it is one of the oldest letterpress shops in the world, I believe. Yeah. They've been printing for, I think, around 140 years. All of the old show posters and tour posters that you see from back in the day were printed at Hatch Show Print. So check it out. Matt even has a show poster that was made there. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty epic. <laughs> now, obviously, there are a whole lot of other ways to experience Nashville's music history other than the Country Music Hall of Fame, and we'll put a full list of those in our blog. The link for that will be in the description, so check that out. Some of our favorites that we think are worth noting are the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum, which honors the musicians who actually played on many of the greatest recordings of all time. There's also the National Museum of African American Music, which showcases the musical genres inspired, creative or influenced by African Americans. Of course, there's the Johnny Cash Museum. The Patsy Cline Museum. <laughs> and probably most notable of all, the Ryman, which has been referred to as the Carnegie Hall of the South and more commonly known as the Mother Church and has hosted acts such as Louis Armstrong, Bruce Springsteen, Garth Brooks, Aretha Franklin, the Foo Fighters, and the list could go on and on and on. <laughs> and now we're gonna be headed to another historic place, RCA Studio B, so let's go. Back on the bus to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Studio B's right here. I delivered DoorDash uh, right across the street one time. We're on Music Row, by the way. <laughs> 
Um, so that was absolutely yeah, epic. Was I mean, awesome. uh, Dolly Parton's I Will <laughs> Always Love You was recorded it, in that room. It doesn't get much more iconic than that song. Pretty much all of Elvis's recordings were in that studio. Like, yeah. epic. I love the fact that we got to sit in the studio, listen mm -hmm. to songs that were recorded in that room with the original Steinway piano sitting in the corner that you're hearing on the recordings. Also, you got to sit at the piano and take photos with it, so that's pretty cool as well. Super epic. <laughs> also, I didn't realize that it is Nashville's oldest surviving recording studio. Yeah. It's the only historic recording studio tour that's offered in Nashville, so you definitely have to add RCA Studio B to your list. Absolutely. And once you've gotten your fill of Nashville's music history, it's time to dive a little deeper into the city's culture, and our favorite way to do that with any destination <laughs> is... With its food! <laughs> Let's do it. Whether you're having hot chicken and mac and cheese at Hattie B's, pulled pork and cornbread at Edley's Barbecue, or biscuits and gravy at Biscuit Love, one thing is for sure. Nashville's food scene is southern to the core. But the culinary delights don't end at hot chicken, barbecue, and biscuits. You can also enjoy sweet treats like Goo Goo Clusters at the famous Goo Goo Chocolate Company, Soft Serve at Bobby's Dairy Dip, or Cronuts at Five Daughters Bakery. And when you dig a little deeper, you'll discover a tapestry of flavors from farm-to-table restaurants like the Farmhouse Restaurant and Lachlan Table, modern gastro pubs like the Stillery and Pinewood Social, and international delights such as Shohan Ale and Masala House and international market. But whether you're indulging in fluffy biscuits and jam for breakfast, enjoying a leisurely brunch with inventive twists, or delving into the ever-growing array of globally inspired eateries, Nashville's food scene doesn't disappoint. We've made our way over to East Nashville and are about to go on a three-hour food tour where we're going to be trying some quintessential southern foods as well as some modern and international twists on some of the classics. We do want to thank our friends at Get Your Guide for setting this up for us. We're going to put the link down below and right up here so you can book this tour for yourself among many others. And if you aren't familiar with Get Your Guide, it is our absolute favorite place to book experiences, tours, and tickets. They offer over 60,000 curated experiences in more than 3,600 destinations worldwide. So no matter where you're going, there's a pretty good chance that Get Your Guide will have something for you. You can download and access your tickets straight from the app. So there's no printing required, which is amazing. We can't tell you how many times we've had to scramble in the middle of our travels to try and find a printer because we didn't read the fine print that said you had to print the tickets beforehand, which is so annoying, but that was before we found Get Your Guide. They also offer 24-7 customer support and free cancellation up to 24 hours before your booking because you never know when something's going to come up and plans have to change. All that to say, we love Get Your Guide and we think you guys will too, so make sure you check out the links down below. Now, let's go eat. Starting with the most quintessential Nashville food of all, hot chicken. It does look really hot, like spicy. It definitely looks hot. Oh, oh yeah. God. I'm gonna die. It's hot. Hotter than we would normally go with. <laughs> this is ticket. We'd never had their hot chicken before and actually it was really good. The flavor was good even though it was spicy. Yeah, I'll give it, it was that sweet spot of spice and flavor where you weren't miserable, so thumbs up. <laughs> now we're going this way, we're going this way. <laughs> wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> All right, on to the next stop. <laughs> Um, so we just got to Joyland and Feed Phil has been here. As Sean Brock is the master chef behind the whole thing, I believe he's also behind one of the popular restaurants here in the south called Husk. But they are famous for their crust burgers here. Looks delicious. It's a smash burger with essentially all the crusty bits on the edge and like a toasted really thin bun. This wasn't included in the food tour. We yeah. just paid for it because obviously it's so famous. Yeah. But we're getting something that's off menu on this food tour. Yeah. So. Plus we ordered their in-house beer called Joy beer so I think this is gonna be a delicious time. I'm excited. I understand the hype. Oh my god. This is good guys. I think it's my new favorite burger spot in town. So this is what Sean does with the red corn. My first ever red corn biscuit. It's really good. It's got flavor. They're very dense. see why this burger won the best burger in Nashville in 2022. So we are at our 
our final stop of the food tour, but we will be trying two items here. The first of which is this pulled pork sandwich with coleslaw from Q Babies. Mm, so the sauce has got a nice tang to it, not too sweet. I could use a whole sandwich of just the bark. That's my style. <laughs> I'm going dessert first. So we got a churro filled with buttercream. This thing's hefty. <laughs> so good. I just want this, I don't want the pulled pork. Because we've been eating so much, they gave us uh, to-go bags. That was so much fun, especially doing it in our home city. Yes, all the food was great, and there were quite a few places that we had never even tried, so definitely a thumbs up for the food tour. Now, obviously, the food scene here in Nashville is so big, yes. so make sure you guys check out our blog. We'll link it down below for some of our favorite recommendations. And once you've filled your belly exploring Nashville's food scene, it's time to get a taste of the food that Nashville is really known for, and that is the food for the soul. You can't come to Nashville without experiencing live music. I mean, literally, I don't even know if it's possible. It is everywhere. And it's not just country music. Nashville has become a hub for many genres of music and has been rated the number one music scene in the U.S. by countless publications year after year. With world-class and iconic venues like the Ryman Auditorium, the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center, the Grand Ole Opry, the Bluebird Cafe, the Exit Inn, and so many more, whether you're looking for an intimate night of music or a stadium show with 70,000 of your closest friends or anything in between, Nashville has you covered. For those of you that don't know, Natalie and I both are musicians and songwriters that moved to Nashville nearly a decade ago now. And one of the things that we love about living in Nashville is the incredible community that we've been able to build within the music industry. And we are super excited to share some of that community with you tonight. We're headed to an exclusive listening party for some of our dear friends who just so happen to be one of the hottest up and coming music acts here in Nashville, Jake and Shelby. You may have heard of them already, but if you haven't, we'll put links to their socials and their music down in the description of the video, and you can thank us later. Yeah. Guys, we cannot speak highly enough about Jake and Shelby. Tonight was just so, so good. Their vocals, their chemistry, it and, was awesome. And they're just so authentic. You have to check them out. Honestly, this is one of our favorite things to do anytime we are home is get out and support our amazingly talented friends, whether it's at a private event showcasing some of Nashville's best up and coming talent. Or at a writer's round at one of the most iconic venues in the city, featuring some of the industry's most seasoned pros. The talent in the city is undeniable. We're here at the Bluebird Cafe tonight to see some of our good friends and hit songwriters Pete Salas, Will Nance, and Rob Crosby perform some of their biggest hits that have been recorded by artists like George Strait, Brad Paisley, Luke Combs, Brooks and Dunn, Keb Moe, and the list just keeps going yeah, and does. going. <laughs> but right now the show is about to start so let's go get our seats. have a round of songwriters and they would just take one turn each and just go around and around and stop whenever your time was up. So that's how this whole round thing started. It started here at the Bluebird Cafe and Garth Brooks was discovered here and Taylor Swift. Now just so you know, we don't do cover songs. This is all original material we wrote. Some you've heard on the radio, some you haven't. You know who Brad Paisley is? Yeah. If he plays it for Brad, I get a call from day. He goes, Will, Brad's digging that song you wrote. She's on one glass of wine. And she's feeling kind of tipsy and she's everything to me. She was a rainbow that danced between the rain and the sun. He had a fast car just like his heart, always on the run. Uh, he said, hey. Just because they cut it don't mean I can't cut it. And I said, exactly. <laughs> and he did, and it was his first number one. Great song. Yeah. 
So that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I would have expected nothing less out of songwriters of that caliber, but if you have never experienced a writer's round where you're getting to hear the songs that you've likely been singing along to on the radio for years now, and hearing those songs and the stories behind them from the songwriters who wrote them, there is nothing else like it, and it's something that you have to experience when you come to Nashville. And now that we've gotten a taste of the city's food and music scene, now it's time to get a taste of Tennessee's favorite spirit, or as Frank Sinatra once called it the nectar of the gods. The words Tennessee and whiskey seem to be synonymous. There are 14 distilleries in Middle Tennessee alone, including the award-winning distilleries Nearest Green, Corsair, Nelson's Greenbrier, and of course the most famous of them all, Jack Daniels. We've made our way about 75 miles south of Nashville to the famous Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. But don't worry if you don't have a car for your time in Nashville, there are tours that offer round trip transportation. So all you have to do is sit back and enjoy the ride. Now we live in Nashville mm -hmm. obviously, so we drove ourselves, but know that that is an option. We're gonna be taking the flight of Jack Daniels tour where obviously we're gonna be getting a behind the scenes on how Jack Daniels is made, plus a tasting of five different Jack Daniels products. The tour starts in like five minutes, so we gotta go. <laughs> Before we start this tour, my dad is a Tennessee Squire, which apparently is a big deal with Jack Daniels. He owns like a square inch of land or something. <laughs> and then my brother is like part of the Sinatra Country Club. So apparently my family loves Jack Daniels. Um, yep. So we're gonna see what all the hype's about. <laughs> Whiskey! We like every single <laughs> There's two guys that make our charcoal for us full time. They've made our charcoal together for the last 20 years. Wow. So if you had Jack anywhere in the world in the last 20 years, it was filtered by charcoal that two guys made right here on our property. So we're going to head down the hill. <laughs> learning so much and I'm having an absolute blast. Yes, I can't believe we waited this long to do this. No, Brandy, our tour guide, is amazing. We're not gonna be able to film like where they actually produce it, yep. but you but have the, to come. But the fact that every drop of Jack Daniels anywhere in the world is made right here right on here. site. Right here, so cool. If you guys are enjoying this video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up because it helps out our channel way more than you know. We're on a journey to see as many of the 1,000 places to see before you die, places like Nashville and the Jack Daniels Distillery <laughs> here. So hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along on the journey. We would love to have you. Jack's where it's at. That's good. The property is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, they've done an exceptional job of just putting this place together. The landscape architecture mm. is really beautiful. typically a whiskey fan, but I think I am now because that was epic. Even if you're not a whiskey fan mm -hmm. or a whiskey drinker, you have to come do this tour because you gain an entire new appreciation for whiskey in general, but most importantly for Jack Daniels because you go through the whole history. You know, I'm not a whiskey or bourbon connoisseur, but the fact that the only difference between Tennessee whiskey and bourbon is the fact that Tennessee whiskey has to be made in Tennessee and it has to be charcoal mellowed, meaning it has to be filtered through charcoal. What was one 
one of your favorite things that you had at the tasting? Oh, the Gentleman Jack Same. is like, it was so smooth. Highly, highly recommend yeah. coming here because it is <laughs> awesome. Also, a little side note, if you do come and do this distillery tour, go ahead and plan to come a little bit earlier or stay later to do lunch at Miss Mary Bobo's yes. Boarding House Restaurant. Make sure to make reservations ahead of time mm -hmm. though. It's a family style restaurant, which means you're sitting at a big round table with a bunch of strangers that you just met, but they end up being family at the end yep. because you're passing food <laughs> around, sharing stories, and most importantly, the food is delicious. And once you get back to Nashville, the good times don't stop nope. because Nashville is known for its many, many parties on wheels, and that's what we're doing next. Let's go. From tractors with trailers in tow to open air stretch limousines to party pontoons to themed buses to pedal taverns on land and water, Nashville's entertainment transportation is second to none. But if partying on the go isn't your speed, no need to worry because there are plenty of more relaxed options as well, like the General Jackson Showboat Dinner Cruise, Golf Cart and Segway Tours, the Old Town Hop On Hop Off Trolley, Helicopter Tours, and the tour that we're taking you along on now. So we've made our way back downtown and we are about to hop on the Home of the Stars bus tour, where we'll be taking a narrated ride around the city to see over 30 of Nashville's celebrity homes. Let's go because I am so nosy. <laughs> This old building here to the right is the oldest high school in the state of Tennessee. Folks, you've heard of the Beverly Hillbillies, and they had a real home that they filmed from. You keep <laughs> Minnie Pearl lived right here for 24 years with her husband. My question to you folks is who was known as the queen of disco? Donna Summers. Where? Reba McIntyre lives. See people rocking around with cameras, twist G's out. You will see the Parthenon. Um, so that was so much fun. I had a blast. Like, obviously we live here, so we do know some stuff, yep. but I still learned a whole lot. <laughs> and it's something that Natalie had been wanting to do for a long time. Highly recommend, <laughs> highly recommend. I love houses and architecture, yep. and I'm just nosy, so I want to know where people live. I also enjoyed that it was more than just celebrity homes. Mm -hmm. Since there is a little bit of time between the houses, obviously there's some time to fill. Our guy did an excellent job of filling that time with Nashville history. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, he also was as country as cornbread. <laughs> I, I stole that from him, but he was he was so fun. But if you want to learn a little bit more about Nashville history, or if celebrity homes and pop culture aren't really your thing, that's okay because Nashville has a whole lot to offer to all you history buffs out there. Nashville's history dates all the way back to 1779 when the frontier post of Fort Nashboro was built Built along the banks of the Cumberland River. Since then, Nashville has had a colorful past and many of the sites involved in the historical events have been preserved for our remembrance and education so that we can make better decisions about our present and future. Some of those sites include the Bellmead Historic Site, the Carton Historic Home and Museum, Fort Negley, and the site we'll be exploring next, Andrew Jackson's Hermitage. More commonly referred to as simply the Hermitage, this more than 1,100 acre property was owned by President Andrew Jackson from 1804 until his death here in 1845. In addition to being Andrew Jackson's final resting place, the Hermitage is on the National Register of Historic Places and has served as a public museum since 1889. So let's go show you around. They sell that for $10,000, they buy 425 acres here for $3,400. Welcome to 1837, exactly what Andrew Jackson saw when he came back from the White House. Unfortunately, we can't film in here, so you'll just have to experience it for yourself. That was really cool to see. Like 80% is authentic to Andrew Jackson's time. Yep, and it was all actually his items there, like literally original, his slippers sitting on the floor, which by the way, he had very small feet. Like he was seven and a half. Six foot one with a size seven and a half <laughs> shoe. I found that interesting. <laughs> That's what you found interesting. I mean, I got a size 12 and I'm six one. <laughs> 
So his grandchildren grew up in this house and then they gave it over to the state. So literally only Andrew Jackson's family has lived on this property, yep. which I find so fascinating. Hence why there's so many of their things here. And by gave it over to the state, she does oh, mean they sold yeah, it to they the sold state. Yeah, they sold it. <laughs> and then still lived in it as tenants for like 30 years, which is just fascinating. So another fun fact, Andrew Jackson was the seventh president, but he also is the only president that ever paid off our national debt. <laughs> and with our current national debt situation, I would put money on the fact that he's probably the only president that will have ever paid it off. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately so, but that is really, really impressive. He was mm -hmm. really good with money. So yep. now we're gonna check out the rest of the property. Yep, let's do it. like my worst fear. I was literally on my phone like looking up facts and Matt put his arm nicely on my shoulder and said, Nat, just hold on a second. He saved my life. <laughs> and now it's gone. And you can't even tell it's in that grass. <laughs> like that part is the most terrifying to me. I hate snakes. Like I am so deathly afraid of them. And every time we go hiking, it goes right in front of me. Isn't it true? <laughs> it is true. Why? And now back to your regularly scheduled program. the hermitage so much i've been here so many times <laughs> she comes by herself because she loves this place so no much. seriously <laughs> i highly highly recommend doing the wagon tour when you guys come i've done it so cool <laughs> i love the fact that pretty much everything here is original artifacts from mm -hmm. andrew jackson and his family it's not like a recreation like our guide said yeah. it's he called it a time capsule essentially yeah. i mean and it really did feel like that you really only need about what two to three hours mm -hmm. to experience this place you could spend a whole lot more time because it is beautiful yeah. <laughs> but it's a nice break from the busy and sometimes chaotic streets of nashville but if loud and chaotic is your thing you're gonna love what we've got coming up next <laughs> nashville is home to four professional sports teams and hosts multiple professional motorsports events throughout the year making it an excellent city for sports lovers as a whole and while nashville is a fairly young professional sports city the culture and team allegiance is ingrained deeply into the city's dna so whether you plan to cheer on the Titans at Nissan Stadium, the Preds at Bridgestone Arena, the Sounds at First Horizon Park, or the Nashville Soccer Club at Geodis Park. Be sure to bring your team spirit and be prepared for a good time. Now, let's show you what the hype is all about. Tonight, we are here at Geodis Park, which is just back behind us, to cheer on Nashville's newest professional sports team, the Nashville Soccer Club. Fun fact, Geodis Park is the largest soccer-specific stadium in the United States and Canada, which is kind of wild to think <laughs> that it would be here in Nashville, but I'm here for yeah, it. Yeah, it really is. I think it holds like 30,000 fans, I believe. Yeah. Pretty impressive. But this is our first ever Nashville Soccer Club experience, and we are excited to take you along. So let's get to it. our first time here, we decided to go big and do the club level. Yep, which comes with all the food and drink you want provided with the tickets and incredible seats. We're so excited about this. I mean, this. you literally can see the field in air conditioning, might I add. <laughs> but this place is beautiful and packed. I yep, mean, I'm so excited. Incredible. So I got us some of the Nashville Soccer Club in-house beer. It's called the Pitch Invasion Lager, I believe, brewed by Fat Bottom Brewing right here in Nashville. Let's give it a try. Super light, perfect for a nice warm day. So let's go eat some.
opinion on food? Actually, really, really good. Yes. I love the pasta, <laughs> the candied walnuts. Yep, everything mean. exceeded my expectations, so definitely a thumbs up. And guess what time it is now? Dessert time. All right, I picked it out, so let's see it what Matt like, eats. It looks like a pie, and is that the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, it's upside two, down. Yeah. I thought it was two different things. So you things. have a pecan pie <laughs> and one upside down pecan pie, and then chocolate chip cookie. Oh man. And they have this huge refrigerator, like a couple of them with like cold drinks that you oh. can just, oh my gosh, and beers. This place oh. is epic. I think it spoiled us. And anytime we come back, we're doing the club level like we have to. Yep. What happened? A guy got hit in the junk, but he's okay now. Oh, come on. They fouled a guy who just got hit in the junk Let and he's play. back in the game. Let him play. Let him play. They don't have an announcer, so I don't know exactly what's happening. You really just have to watch. Follow the crowd. Yeah. They're booing you boo. Yeah. We couldn't have asked for better. Speaking of weather, Nashville has tons of parks and activities to get out and enjoy its seasons, and that's what we're gonna do next. Whether you're into hiking, biking, kayaking, or any number of outdoor activities, Nashville has something for you. From the abundance of water activities offered on Percy Priest Lake and the many rivers and streams nearby, to hiking in the numerous nature centers and state parks, to walking, running, and biking on the nearly 100 miles of paved multi-use greenways, to pit nicking in one of the many urban parks, there are many ways to get outside and enjoy the great outdoors. And today we plan to do just that. We've made our way about nine miles east of downtown to Percy Priest Lake Dam, which is the start of the Stones River Greenway, and it is a beautiful day for biking. And if you don't have bikes of your own, no need to worry. There are multiple bike rental options around the city, or you can absolutely enjoy any of the greenways by foot. And while it is possible to ride this trail all the way into East Nashville and beyond, I don't think we're going to be up for that since it's more than a 20 mile round trip ride. But that's the wonderful thing about the Greenway system. Whether you put in 2 miles or 20 miles, it's a great way to get outside in Nashville. skinny yet <laughs> I'm sweating just a little bit <laughs> I'm dying <laughs> But it's a lot of fun. It's it a lot is. of fun. It's okay. beautiful. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. If you do decide that you want to get out and enjoy the great outdoors in Nashville, we put together an entire list of all the parks and outdoor areas in the area, including dog parks. So we're going to put that link down in the description. So make sure you guys check it out. Also, it's worth mentioning the river, which is over right here beside us, called the Stones River, which is why this is called the Stones River Greenway, is one of our favorite kayaking areas. Yeah. It's a little slow flow right now. So if you're going to do it, check the dam release schedule so you don't have to paddle too much. But Unless it, you want a good workout. <laughs> but literally it's our favorite. We go from the dam and we just float on down in our kayaks. It's awesome. Yep. You could actually float all the way to downtown. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now let's get back to it. <laughs>
joke. I didn't break any of them, so that's good. Uh. That was a nice little workout, y'all. We got a leisurely six or so miles in, I think. It really felt like 20. <laughs> there are some hills that make it a little more difficult at times. Yes, that's for sure. If you couldn't tell from our breathing. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It's a great way to get out of the city for a few hours and enjoy the outdoors, especially if you have kids that have a little extra energy that they yeah. need to burn off. And if you're looking for more ways to enjoy this area with the kids, then you're gonna wanna stick around for what's next. While many of the activities that we've shown throughout this video are family friendly, we also want to share some options that are not only family friendly, but family focused. Because despite Nashville having a healthy party scene, it also has some excellent activities for kids of all ages. During the summer months, you can beat the heat at Nashville Shores and Sound Waves Water Parks. Adventure Science Center and the Tennessee State Museum Children's Gallery offer great indoor activities. And if you're looking for something outdoors that can be enjoyed year round, head to Cheekwood Gardens or the Nashville Zoo, which is where we're headed next. This place is over 3,000 animals, representing more than 325 different species, and is ranked the number one tourist attraction in Middle Tennessee, welcoming over a million visitors each year. It's located just six miles south of downtown and sits on 188 acres, but only 90 of those acres is developed, so there is a ton of room for expansion, which I hear there are some plans in the works for that, but we'll just have to wait and see. For now, let's go check this place out. Right there was worth every single penny. <laughs> I've never been that close to a flamingo. The fact that you're in the enclosure with the kangaroos is amazing. And if they come to you, you can pet them. That was my favorite part so far. <laughs> Pretty cool, actually. That Even though we didn't get to pet them. I did want to mention that we came during nap time. For some reason, all the animals are sleeping, but it's still really, really fun. <laughs> chunky boy. Chunky boy. <laughs> Me He's too. Me too. He's also a Nubian goat, so they're already like bigger. Am I a Nubian? <laughs> also, I didn't just like know that, the zookeeper told us. So I'm scared to touch goats. I've seen them ram little kids or ram people in the crotch, you know? Well, go for it. Ooh. Come on, you got hey, it. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Far away you are. <laughs> I'm safe. You did it. <laughs> I've never brushed a goat before. Let's go. I'm a goat brusher. Don't be eating my bag. No, this is an expensive bag. Mine is black gorgeous. <laughs> While this has been one of the more family-friendly recommendations that we've given, we have truly enjoyed our visit. I absolutely love the interactive exhibits, like getting up close and personal with kangaroos, <laughs> flamingos. And, and goats. And, and goats. goats. <laughs> I am a goat brusher now. <laughs> we also really enjoyed the farm animal area, mm -hmm. which was surprising to us because obviously the animals are pretty normal animals, cows and donkeys and such, but the area was so relaxing. Yeah, they even have a historic home that does tours every. 30 minutes and the gardens were absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we could have spent hours there, mm. honestly. So just because you don't have kids or aren't traveling with kids, don't think that you can't enjoy the Nashville Zoo. And now that you've gotten your fill of wildlife experiences, let's head back into the city for a little bit more of a tame experience. <laughs>
Nashville has dozens of neighborhoods worthy of experiencing. Some of the most popular include the Gulch, which is known for its modern hotels, high-end fashion boutiques, and trend-setting restaurants. 12 South, which is a residential neighborhood known for its bungalow-style homes, elevated casual dining, stylish designer boutiques, and the iconic I Believe in Nashville mural. East Nashville, which is known for its quirky vibe and buzzing food and nightlife scene. Midtown, which is a major nightlife hub with countless bars, restaurants, and live music venues scattered throughout. And one of our favorites, Hillsboro Village is an eclectic neighborhood filled with restaurants, coffee shops, boutiques, retail shops, and so much more that draws in both locals and visitors alike. Some of our favorites here in this neighborhood are the iconic Pancake Pantry, Fido, Barista Parlor, the Grilled Cheesery, and the list goes on. <laughs> but right now, a good cup of coffee is calling my name, so let's go. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear us, but I got a chai latte per use. And I got their signature bourbon vanilla specialty drink. My favorite here. Cheers. Mm. Really good, good as it always is, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Never fails. So one thing that we haven't gotten here before is their apple fritters. I'm excited. Good. This is really good. Super sugary, moist. I love the chunks of apple in it. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. Glad we got two. <laughs> I was like, we could just share. Matt was like, no, I'm hungry. We're getting two. Share. <laughs> <laughs> It started raining. Uh, I wasn't ready. Thankfully, this awesome uh, outdoor thrift shop has tents. So let's go shop. <laughs> so we're going to go shop <laughs> under tents. If you guys know me, you know I love a good vintage t shirt. So hopefully, I find one. It's a good find. With my ACDC on. <laughs> I mean, right here was a good find. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That look good on you. <laughs> it's my size, I think. If I didn't wear anything under it, I think I could fit. Comment below. <laughs> what do you think? Uh... <laughs> Should I get this for our trip? That was a lot of fun, and since it's raining, it means that we get to go into more stores. <laughs> It's gonna be an expensive day, guys. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> watching our vlogs for a while now you know how obsessed I am with this place and Nashville finally got one so let's go check it out I ran out of some tea that I bought in different states so I'm getting refills now Now obviously, we recommend exploring as many of the Nashville neighborhoods as possible. Each one has its own unique charm and vibe and personality, so take some time to find your favorites. And if you do have more time in the area, Nashville makes for a great home base for some excellent day trips. With so many great destinations, just a short drive from Nashville, it would be a shame not to explore the greater Nashville area and beyond if you have some extra time. If you want to stay within an hour's drive of Nashville, some of our favorites that we recommend are the towns of Franklin and Leapers Fork. Both of these offer a more relaxed experience away from the hustle and bustle of the big city. And right nearby, you'll find the Kicks Brooks owned Arrington Vineyards, a beautiful winery with hillside picnicking, wine by the bottle or flight, frosé, snacks, and even live music on occasion. If you're willing to drive a bit further, the options really start to open up with destinations like Chattanooga, Memphis, 
the Great Smoky Mountains, and Louisville, Kentucky, all within a two to three hour drive. Be sure to check out our other videos on those areas for tips to help plan your visit. We hope this video has helped you guys make the most of your time here in Music City. And if you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button. And remember to check out our blog for a more detailed and extensive list of the best things to do in Nashville. What is that? Nice summer look. You can take a nap right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, boys! Do you guys want to see our hat here? Our helmet here? Ready? I mean, it can't be any goofier looking than me with a helmet on. That's pretty rough, dog. Yeah, mine's pretty <laughs> bad. Oh my gosh, it's so you bad. Need, Look at the it. back. Oh, you got a ring around your head. <laughs> That's pretty rough. Matt, you're not supposed to say that. That's pretty rough. Turn around for one more time. I don't think there's any coming back from that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want a goat brush? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I did it. Yeah, you get a free Chalupa Supreme because we won. Woo!